What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back in another video for you guys. So I was requested to check out this video. It's called Why Hollywood Won't Cast These 10 Actors Anymore. Now, you know, usually I don't know how it goes on in Hollywood. You know, I ain't really trying to figure it out. But I mean, I figured maybe some people, they don't have it like they used to once they get a certain age. Or maybe they don't get called no more. You know, due to some reasons. I'm guessing we're going to find that out in this video, you know. Unless they wanted to, like, get out of their contracts or just don't want to do it no more. If you can do that, because, you know, I heard in Hollywood, it ain't no good. Allegedly. Allegedly. I heard allegedly you got to sell your soul to the devil and all of that type of shit. But that's for a whole nother video. Speaking of, if y'all got some conspiracy videos, send me some in the link. Send me some in the description, I mean. Send me some in the comments. Damn, I can't get my shit together. But uh, let's check out this video. All right? In about a three, two, one. Top Trending presents. Presents. What the fuck is wrong with me? Do you ever get the feeling while watching a film you haven't seen in a few years where you realize that an actor who used to be absolutely everywhere hasn't had a major Hollywood outing in ages? Like they've faded from the public eye altogether. There might mm -hmm. be quite a few people on this list that you Amanda, realize Amanda, you Amanda, haven't Amanda heard show. anything from. Where Maybe is the original Peter Parker? Here and there. You're watching Top Trending, and today we're no counting shade. down the top 10 actors Hollywood won't hire anymore. Amanda pleads. To start off our countdown at number 10, like we have her. Amanda Bynes. If Where your childhood was in the 90s, you might recognize her from her hell popular yeah, TV baby. series, The Amanda Show on Nickelodeon, from 1999 Amanda, to 2002. Please. The show ran for three seasons and had a favorable run, but Only then three? Bynes wanted to move on to bigger and better things, which she did, oh. headlining some television projects such as What I Like About You on the WB, from 2002 to 2006. Her career in TV was certainly a success, and it reached the point where it only seemed to make sense to extend her talents into acting into the world of film. This wasn't necessarily a mistake, yes, but Bynes' film works didn't ever reach the success of her TV outings. During the noughties, she starred in a few fairly successful films, including What a Girl Wants, She's the Man, and Sidney White, Ooh. all modest though popular teen comedies. Bynes' string of fairly lackluster movies began to turn public opinion on her, and she's at a point where her last role in film or TV was the film Easy A, eight years ago. Amanda also had a small string of legal trouble in the early 2010s, mm -hmm. including being at the center of a drunk driving charge in 2012, a that. marijuana possession charge in 2013, Yikes. which was later dismissed, and allegedly starting a fire in a stranger's that, driveway also horrible. in 2013, none of which likely helped her find work. At number 9, we have Tobey Maguire. Where if you know you, him sir? from anything, you'll almost definitely know him as the original Spider-Man. Yes. Maguire was everywhere in the early 2000s. First gaining deserved cultural relevance through starring in films such as The Cider House Rules, Wonder Boys, Seabiscuit, and of course, Spider-Man. Maguire was at the height of his celebrity during his brief run in the role of Spider-Man, but with the end of the series also came the end of the most notable parts of his career. After the release of Spider-Man 3 that came out to mixed critical reception, Maguire's career was sort of all it. over Fuck the place. Two years later, he <laughs> Started like, in a mix to positive received movie Brothers, alongside Jake Gyllenhaal and Natalie Portman. And that's about it. Four years after that, he did play Nick in The Great Gatsby, which was an absolute hit. But that was five years ago, and the only notable thing McGuire has been in since then has been a voice in The Boss Baby. Here's hoping he makes a resurgence soon. At number eight, we have John Travolta. John Travolta's career has been through its ups and downs since he minute. first emerged in the 1970s. Like, in his minute, first minute. significant role being Billy Nolan, in a, a minute, bully minute. from the 1976 film Carrie. Travolta quickly bagged a spot in the TV sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter before taking starring roles in Saturday Night Fever and Grease. If you've only heard of John Travolta once, it would have been through either of those films. At age 24, Travolta was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Saturday Night Fever, making him the youngest actor ever to be nominated for such an award. After his brief run of success in the 70s, Travolta fell from being Hollywood elite for a good period of time in the 80s. He starred in four major films during the 80s, three of which, Two of a Kind, Perfect, and Staying Alive, were all critically panned. In 1989, Travolta started to get his groove back, appearing in films such as Love Who's Talking and Pulp Fiction. Since then, unfortunately, his career has taken another dip in popularity. His last notable hit has been Savages, a 2012 flick by Oliver Stone which is generally agreed to be one of Stone's worst movies. And Ooh. it's been a long time Dang. since Travolta Volta has had a proper blockbuster. Oh, I love that movie with him and Martin Lawrence. In our number seven spot, we have Shia LaBeouf. This one's a little tragic. Shia first appeared on our screens with yeah. the Disney Channel show Even Stevens, I which I guarantee you forgot about Disney until stars. just now. In 2003, he starred in the screen adaptation of Louis Carr's novel Holes. Shia is a genuinely talented actor, and his talent kept landing him roles on screen as he progressed into playing roles in more widely known blockbusters such as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and the Transformers series. However, Shia's ego has definitely begun to get the better of him, with several scandals 
centering around his actions against the police while being arrested, or accusations of plagiarism in his short film HowardCantor.com. In recent years, what? Shia has begun moving on to experimental performance art, such as hashtag I am sorry and the He Will Not Divide Us campaigns. You might know him from the Do It meme or the fantastic song Shia LaBeouf by Rob Cantor, in which LaBeouf is portrayed as a cannibal. Shia seems to be at a point where his recent scandals and off-screen behavior just get in the way of his acting talents, and his work has notably slowed down over the last few years, having acted in one film a year since 2014. Yikes. Number six is Eddie Murphy. It's been yeah, decades since Eddie well, Murphy has had a really I, good role, disappointing as that may be. Eddie Murphy first broke out in the 80s as a stand-up comedian, vocalist, and actor, which is honestly pretty incredible. You might know him as Mushu from Mulan, Donkey from Shrek, Hell Professor Clump yeah. from The Nutty yes. Professor, or Billy Ray Valentine from Trading Places. Eddie Murphy has been around the block quite a few times. His voice talent is unmatched, and his run of hilarious comedies during the 80s and 90s were unmatched, though sadly his career has been slowing down a lot recently. Recently, though, his work is definitely not what it used to be. Murphy found some success in the 2006 film Dream Girls, winning a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor and being nominated for an Academy Award in the same category. After that, though, his filmography is painful to look at. Since Dream Girls, he's been nominated for 10 Razzies across four separate movies Norbit, Meet Dave, Imagine That, and A Thousand Words, unfortunately, winning three of those. Murphy has only starred in one film in the last six years, with the style he's aiming to go for being too alienating to a general audience. As much as we hope he gets his groove back, we don't think that'll work out all too well. At number five, we have Taylor Lautner. In the right. late 90s, Lautner was one of the most the recognizable faces of that movie landscape. Dawn. Though first voice acting in shows such as Danny Phantom and What's New Scooby-Doo, Lautner's big break wasn't until 2008, when the movie mm -hmm. Twilight, based on the popular book series by Stephanie series Meyer, too. came out. Lautner's fame was immediate, but also incredibly brief. The Twilight series was a global craze, but Lautner didn't have the versatility required to branch out into other roles past the Twilight series. Ever since Twilight, oh. he's been jumping from role to role, not really finding anything that sticks as his appeal outside of Twilight has really yet to be found. Lautner was cast in the 2011 film Abduction, before the release of Breaking Dawn Parts 1 and 2, a film which was met with almost universal negative criticism, unfortunately Ooh. Lautner's performance factoring into the critical opinion somewhat. Since Twilight, Lautner's roles have included leading performances in the TV series Cuckoo and Scream Queens, and occasional smaller parts in films such as Grown Ups 2. With roles as infrequent as his filmography suggests, and him not being cast in a new role for two years, it's safe to say that Lautner seems to be struggling struggling to find his place since the Twilight phenomenon. At number four, we have Freddie Prince Jr., his first right. role being that of tough guy in an episode of the TV show Family Matters in 1995. Prince found himself quickly rising to stardom, which included roles such as the lead in the romantic comedy She's All That in 1999, and the live-action Scooby-Doo films as I Fred in 2002 and 2004. Oh God, the Scooby-Doo live-action films didn't really turn into as much of a franchise as the production company oh, maybe wanted it, it to be, and Freddie found that Hollywood was reluctant to cast him after his success in the movies, eventually turning to television. That seems to be working out for him quite well, having played Cole in season 8 of the popular TV show 24. In addition to his work on television, Prince has done recurring How voice work I know in the TV series summer, Star Wars Rebels, in which he plays the role Cannon Jarrus. Though he's not doing as badly as maybe some on our list, Prince certainly doesn't see the success he used to, and his days in movies seem to be over for now at least, starring in one movie in the last 10 years. In our number three spot, we have Jessica Alba. Alba had been interested in acting since the age I of five. She was in the show a with, lucky uh, win and an acting competition Gabrielle six Union. years later bagged her acting classes as a prize and an agent not long after. Despite her strong interest, Alba repeatedly landed crummy jobs, starring in such Ooh. theatrical flops as Fantastic Four and Awake, earning her five Golden Raspberry nominations and disappointingly one win. Despite repeatedly getting jobs in film like recently, Four. Alba not herself has admitted in an interview Jordan, that she considers herself to have stopped acting at the original? age of 27 and deliberately put it's acting on hold in favor of more business-focused pursuits. After a string of misses, Jessica Alba's resume isn't the greatest, making it pretty difficult to land a job in Hollywood, or anywhere for that matter. In our number two spot, we've put Christopher Mintz Plas. This might be an actor that you won't recognize by name nearly as much as you'll recognize him by voice and face. Christopher Mintz Plas' right. first role is by far his most popular, and he's never really been able to live up to that level of success since. The role in question is Fogel, from the 2007 film Superbad. His role in Superbad did lead to some other great roles, such as his performances in Pitch Perfect and Kick-Ass, but again, they just haven't managed to live up to his debut role. Christopher Mintz Plas' career is fairly young and does have time to develop still, and people are gradually becoming more aware of him through his roles in some Seth Rogen titles such as Neighbors in 2014, but he's been expanding his repertoire in recent years to include music and voiceover work, acting in How to Train Your Dragon and Trolls, with some of his more recent pursuits working out better than some others. 
Finally, at number one, we have Lindsay right, Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. You'll definitely know her from movies such as I mean, as she Freaky did just Friday have a reality TV show, but Lohan I think it got canceled. Lohan first debuted thanks so. to Disney in 1998 in a remake of the 1961 movie The Parent Trap. That was so a good-ass movie, the list? Too. Well, after sustained legal problems and troubles in her personal life, oh, yeah. Lindsay's acting jobs have all but stopped. The last time we've seen her on our screens was in 2013, though she has two outings coming out this year. In addition to her continued legal troubles over the past decade, she's gained a reputation for being particularly difficult to work with, especially after experiencing is on set of the film Georgia Rule. According to production crew and Lindsay's own co-stars, she's a hassle to work with. Her continued lateness oh to Lord. set and general unprofessionalism making a lot of industry professionals less willing to work with her. Considering she has That's two films good. coming out this year, we'll have to stay tuned to see if her career begins to pick up oh. from here again, or whether okay. her time in the spotlight might truly be over. And that's our list. Well, this is an interesting video, but I would think, you know, if some of y'all agree with me, y'all can let me know in the comments. Like, I think... I thought like some of these actors who weren't really much in movies anymore, like you see them with their families or like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. I just think they was just chilling, you know, like, uh, I mean, unless, like I said, they got into some mess and Hollywood ain't really trying to be with that mess. <laughs> so they just stopped really, you know, casting them in either shows, hell, even commercials. Or especially movies, you know, so I don't, I don't know. But definitely, it was always something that went down with these Disney stars or these child stars, if anything. Like, I mean, look at what happened to Orlando Brown, unfortunately. I mean, he went from talking about some ah, la, la, boom, ba, le, le, yeah, all that. You know, it was funny, but it was messed up because this man clearly was on something or something, you know. And, you know, he was on Dr. Field with the damn th Michael Jackson thriller eyes, talking about Michael Jackson is his dad. And Prince Blanket is his son and something like that. He was saying, I'm like, oh, God. But I don't know. It's all a mystery. I mean, I guess once you get in Hollywood, you'll pretty much see how stuff goes. Because the world may never know, you know. <laughs> so, but if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Comment below some of your favorite actors, actresses, or whatever. As well as anything I can react to for you guys next. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, follow my Instagram, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Taylor Rain, I'm out this thing.